humans are tetrapods. That means we have four limbs. We're also bipedal tetrapods like chickens. That means we have four limbs and we walk on two of them. But what about fish? They have fins, but did those fins evolve from legs and arms? Or did our arms and legs evolve from fish fins? Let's have a more careful look at legs. Greetings, earthlings. Greetings, earthlings. Let's look at these limbs. Let's look at these limbs. Look at my limb. Is, look at that. That's a human limb. Now, inside of a limb, we have a, a humerus here, a radius here, and an ulna here. These are two bones here, one bone here. So one bone here, two bones here, and then we have these other bones here. Now, notice that this is a one and then two. Here's one bone and there are two bones. And the same pattern is in the cat limb and the whale and the bat limb. So all of these mammals have the same pattern. And the reason they have the same pattern is because these are homologous structures. We have a common ancestor and those structures were already in the common ancestor. So here are human bones and the same pattern. You can look at the bones. You say, oh, here's one and then it has the two bones. And in the legs, they're kind of like arms. They have one bone and two bones. Now, if you take the fish bones, if you look at a fossil fish from 380 million years ago and scale it out to look like a human being, this is what you get. They're, they're fish bones. They got a vertebrate. They got ribs. Then they have that one and two pattern. And the same in the, in the legs of the fish. So these are the bones of a fossil fish called Gogonesis, scaled to human proportions. And it shows how much of the human body plan had already evolved by 380 million years ago. So let's look at the vertebrate family tree. On the right are their tetrapods, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. And all of them are tetrapods because they have tetra, four pods, feet. And if you look underneath the, the tetrapods, you can see the primitive reptiles that are extinct, and they have four legs too. So let's look at that, that transition from a lobed fin fish to an early amphibian, and you can see that's not that big a change. This coming onto land is interesting, and let's have a little bit more careful look with a phylogenetic tree about this. So the transition from fins to legs is kind of important because that's why we're on land and not in the, in the ocean anymore. And the time period is from 420 million years to 360 million years when a lot of interesting things happened. <clears throat> For example, that gogonaceous fish was at 380 million years ago at the top there. Now, single, that single large bone turned into those two smaller bones at about 400 million years ago. And you can see that in these fossil fish, they don't live anymore. All the ones, the, the critters with arrows are alive today, but the critters just there are fossils. They're dead. They're, you can find them in the rocks. And you can see that they too had a one plus two pattern. And just like the human, one plus two in every other tetrapod. So what about placoderms? Placoderms are even earlier fish. They're about 420, 410 million years ago. And here's what they look like in the middle there. The point is that they gave us the vertebrate face. Now you see that on the left you have a jawless fish and it doesn't have nostrils in the front of its face. It has one nostril on the very top. So the single nostril opening behind the eyes and it had no jaw. Now jaw is something that we often take, it for, take for granted, but you shouldn't. Jaws are very important things and they help you chew food, for example. And uh, jawed fish, evolved out of jawless fish. The one in the upper left is a jawless fish. It doesn't have a bone in its lower jaw. So let's look at another phylogenetic tree. And we can start out with cephalocordata lancelets. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen one, seen one of these, but it looks kind of like a worm. It really doesn't have a head. And uh, that's at the base of this tree of chordates. And then there's something called a tunicate. It's something very sessile at the bottom of the ocean. And uh, it just hangs around and it doesn't really have a head, except we think it has, it does seem to have a head when it's a young, uh, young critter, when it first gets born. Now after that, we have the evolution of a head. Everything to the lower right has a head. These are hagfishes and lampreys and sharks, etc. And then the vertebral column came along. 
and then jaws and a mineralized skeleton, not just a, a cartilage skeleton. And then lungs came along, and then lobed fins, and then they had legs, and then an amniotic egg. Reptiles and mammals have that, and then mammals have milk. And so here we are at the lower right. Now, on the very far right of this diagram, there are large groups, and you can see them. So let's twist the, this thing around. So you can see chordates and craniates and vertebrates and nathostomes. That's just a fancy word for jawed fish. So let's have a look at the phylogenetic tree starting on the right. The amniots, they are the reptiles and mammals. Here they are. And that is the region of this tree where reptiles and mammals live. And notice that at the base of the tree, we have the invention of the amniotic egg. And then what about tetrapods? Tetrapods include the amniots plus the amphibians. And all of those critters have legs. They're tetra that's why they're called tetrapods. Let's look at a larger group, the lobed fin fish. There they are. And at the base of the lobe fins, you can see that's where lobe fins evolved. And coelacanths and lungfish belong to that, as well as all of the, the tetrapods. And there's a larger group called the osteichthins. That's just a fancy word for bony fish. And uh, you can see lungs or lung derivatives evolved at the base of this. And uh, the bony fish include the tetrapods and salamanders and reptiles and mammals. And let's go to a larger group, the nathostomes. That's just a fancy way of saying a jawed fish. And that includes the sharks and the rays. And there they all are. They have jaws and mineralized skeletons. Well, what about a vertebral column? That's why they're called vertebrates. And there they all are. Notice that each one of these groups includes all the members of the previous groups. And that's what's called a monophyletic group. For example, the vertebrates are made out of the nathostomes and the agnatha. The agnatha are the jawless fish, the nathostomes are the jawed fish. And so there are two members of that group, but the vertebrates is the large monophyletic group that includes everything that evolved from the base all the way to today. Now, Here's another tree, and the agnatha are the jawless, the fish without jaws. The nathostomes are the fish with jaws. And this is the phylogenetic tree of the relationships. And here you can see the sharks are fish with jaws, and then the bony fish. And then here are the bony fish with lobed fins. That's kind of like us, but then even more specifically, the tetrapoda. That's us, the four, leg, the four legs. We're a type of fish called a tetrapod, as you can see from this. We're a type of fish with a jaw. And you could say, tetrapods are not fish. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. And you could argue about it all day long. But phylogenetically, we are well embedded into the tree of fish with jaws. As a matter of fact, we evolved from fish without jaws. So we could also call us agnatha, jawless fish. Here's another phylogenetic tree in which the fish are on the bottom and these tetrapods are different colored differently. And we pretend that they're not fish. But as you can see from the origins, we came out of fish and you could so you could arguably call us fish. Here's another way of saying it. The cartilaginous fish are on the top, the non-fish, the tetrapods are in the middle there, and then the other bony fish are on the bottom. And so uh, anyway, it's a controversial issue, but ju rec just recognize that we are a type of fish. We have an inner fish. Another way to do that is, wait a minute, we're tetrapods. We're not fish. We're blue. All the other fish are pink here. And that would be... Uh, if some of the descendants of fish, such as tetrapods, are not considered to be fish, then fish is a paraphyletic group. A paraphyletic group is just a, a bad group that doesn't include all of the descendants of the, or the ancestor, of the common ancestor. But if we include the tetrapods in the fish more consistently, if all the descendants of a fish, such as the tetrapods, are considered to be fish, then we're talking about a monophyletic group. And I think that monophyletic groups are the way to go because if you have an ancestor, then everything that descends from that ancestor should have a common name. And if you're going to call everything fish except a small branch, that's kind of a paraphyletic mistake. So the common man thinks of these things as somewhat separate. You learn in elementary school about mammals and reptiles and amphibians and fish. And then you learn in high school that tetrapods are mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. And you have in the back of your head that there are lots and lots of tetrapods, like cows and dogs and sheep and frogs. And, and the fish are some kind of thing that live in the ocean. We don't think about them much. But in reality, if you start counting species, it's more like this. Lots and lots of fish. And then there's this small group called tetrapods. Even worse, the tetrapods are a kind of fish. They evolved from fish. So maybe that's the more accurate way of thinking about us and ourselves and our origins. Now, 
But here's another way of looking at it, and that is there's a phylogenetic tree, there's a common ancestor of, that was a fish-like thing, it evolved into all these other kinds of fish, and then we say, oh no, no, tetrapods, we're special, we're different, and uh, we don't belong to that. But that would be paraphyletic and bad, so let's do this. Let's say that tetrapods are a kind of fish, because we evolved from a fish-like ancestor. The same thing can be said about jawed fish and jawless fish. If you go to the ocean or aquarium, you'll see lots and lots and lots of jawed fish and only a few jawless fish. But in reality, in terms of the phylogenetic history, there were lots and lots of jawless fish and jawed fish evolved from jawless fish. If you look at that in a phylogenetic tree, here's what it looks like. And interestingly, a jawless fish evolved into a kind of jawless fish called a jawed fish. It sounds contradictory, but it's not because Here's the way you should think about it. Jawed fish evolved from jawless fish. Jawed fish are a kind of jawless fish. Uh, in fact, lots of jawless fish went extinct, and so there, and jawed fish radiated, and so there are many more jawed fish today than there are species of jawless fish. Our phylogenetic tree tells us that these arms used to be pectoral fins, and our legs used to be pelvic fins. And then, about 400 million years ago, lobe-finned fish started to crawl and evolved into early amphibians, and fins became legs. In the next video, I sit down with my colleague Joachim Brox who refuses to admit that he's a fish. I'm a fish, and you're a fish too.